So I finally got my hands on the FlashForge 5M and I want to do a comparison on the FlashForge to the Anycubic Cobra S1 which I've owned for a few weeks now. This one is a little more budget friendly. Let's check it out. Some sample PLA, the power cord, and now let's start pulling some of this foam out. The Bowden tube, which comes up on top, that has to be connected to the print head, and back here to a really cool feature, which I'll show you guys in a minute. Now it does come very well stuffed. A little box of supplies. And in here, the little screen. We got this other piece back here, which pretty much keeps the print head from rolling around during shipping. And that's it guys, as far as unpacking. There's a couple of screws we have to remove here in order to release the print bed. There's one, two, three, four. Now this is incredibly lightweight and one of the things you're going to notice right away is that it's not an enclosed printer like the Cobra S1 which of course means that you'll be limited to the types of filaments that you can print on here. So here's the back side guys and this little piece right here guys is the filament runout sensor. So yes this printer does come with a filament runout sensor which is great so you don't have to babysit your prints. This will stop the print if the filament runs out. Back here we've got your power connection, the power on and off switch, ethernet cable, so you can connect this printer to a network. This also offers Wi-Fi, so that's just one of the two connection options. So let's see what's in the box. We've got some PLA cutters here, filament cutters. Always nice to have. They include some little Allen keys and a screwdriver to remove the screws to release the print bed. We've got the spool holder, a glue stick in case you need to make sure that the print sticks to the bed. We've got some lubricant for the tracks and what looks like could be to unclog the print head. If you're thinking about limited space, this might be an issue because the Bowden tube seems to arch above the printer pretty high up. So something to consider. I don't think you can do this because then you're possibly jamming the PLA as it's running through there. You want it to run smoothly. So just something to consider. Make sure you have space when it comes to this. Oh my God. Well, here we are guys. After much anticipation, I'm able to do a comparison test between the FlashForge Adventurer 5M and the Anycubic Cobra S1. Now these are two very greatly priced printers, both of them excellent for beginners as well as those of you with experience, maybe those of you running a print farm, but my video is primarily focusing on new to the printer world. Uh, those of you who want to start 3D printing and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a 3D printer and you want to make it as easy as possible to start off, these are two great printers. Uh, the major difference between these two is the price. This one right now, the Anycubic Cobra S1, is currently retailing for about $449 on Amazon and also on the Anycubic website. And the uh, Flash, Flash Forge Adventurer 5M, which is this one on my right, is currently retailing for about $279 on Amazon. And both of these printers have amazing features and are incredibly priced for those of you beginning. So for starters, here's a close look at the uh, Flash Forge Adventurer 5M. On the inside, it looks very similar to the Anycubic 
Cobra S1. It's got a bed that actually travels up and down and a print head that pretty much sits on the top. Unlike older printers where the head would go up and down and the bed was stationary at the bottom, these work differently where the bed actually rises and uh, lowers as necessary. Now, if you look inside the Cobra S1, you'll see very similar setup. Okay, the difference, the major, major difference between these two is up the price, as I mentioned, $279 retail price on Amazon and on the Flash Forge website. And this one is $449 on Amazon and on the Anycubic website. Now, both these printers have a touchscreen, as you can see here. With the uh, Flash Forge, the screen is stationary. It doesn't move. Whereas with the Cobra S1, you've got the screen that actually swivels back, which is great in the event that you want to put these in a cabinet where you're very limited to space, you're able to drop this back. But then again, if you look at the size of the printers, this one's a lot shorter in height. So even with a fixed screen, this might fit in the same cavity that you would put this one. Uh, one of the things to take note of is the Bowden tube. If you look up here at the Bowden tube, uh, on this one, it sticks up high on top. So it's something to consider if you're going to stick it into a cabinet. Whereas the uh, Anycubic Cobra S1, everything is inside underneath the top cover. The other thing you may have noticed right away is that the Adventurer 5M is not fully enclosed. This is just a metal frame and it's completely open which is something to consider if you're planning to print with filaments that require a lot of heat the enclosure is something that helps retain the heat and if you don't have that enclosure you're limited as to the kind of filaments that you can use and print on it this one does not include a built-in camera it does have pockets here for the uh, filtration system but there is no filtration system in there because this is the open frame model. Now they do sell a kit for this thing that you can put on that'll turn it into an enclosed unit, but it does require that you print a few of the pieces. Just like the Cobra S1, this one also uses a thumb drive. So if you have a thumb drive to put your files in, it will insert right here so that you can go ahead and put the files in here that you wanna print. And there you have it guys, see? That's how you put your files in with a thumb drive. This, like this one, does not have an SD card slot. Wrapping around the back here, you'll see the similarities in these printers. The spool holder is a small bracket that attaches with two screws to the back. And right here is the Bowden tube where you start the uh, filament. Same scenario here. This is the unit without the uh, ace pro on top so this prints single color at the moment and it has the exact same bracket on the back as you can see another thing the adventure of 5m offers that the anycubic cobra s1 does not is the filament runout sensor so this little piece right here will detect when the filament runs out and it will pause the print before the filament actually makes it all the way down to the end and you end up with wasted print now normally i would print this file here to do a speed comparison between one printer and another uh, unfortunately i was not able to do that with this one because this one is slightly smaller print area than the anycubic cobra s1 uh, this one being at 250 by 250 by 250 this one is 220 by 220 by 220 so this has a slightly smaller print area and as a result of that I was not able to print this file because this one just sits about an inch too high because I couldn't do the speed comparison with that particular print I went ahead and printed these guys here okay so this is what came out of the flash forge adventure 5m as you can see there are no visible layer lines it's printed very nicely and here is the printout, same PLA from the Cobra S1. 
As you can see, the quality is exactly the same. So both these printers are excellent as far as printing. Now, as far as speed, you'd be pleasantly surprised to know that this printer printed this a lot faster than the Anycubic Cobra S1. Now for the speed results. I printed this on the Cobra S1 and it took two hours and 35 minutes. The exact same print on the Adventure 5M, are you guys ready? Under two hours. I was pleasantly surprised that this printer was able to print the exact same file 40 minutes less than the S1. If you're looking for speed, Either one of these is great, but amazingly, this one, which is lower price, is actually a little faster, and the results were identical, guys. Identical. All right, so here are what I found to be the negatives on this printer. Number one negative that I found was the smaller print pad. It's a 220 by 220 by 220, uh, which basically you know limits to what size a print you can make on it but overall it's not bad like i said this print would have been here but it was about an inch too tall so it's really not bad the other uh negative that i found on this one is that there is no lighting um obviously this is an open frame printer but there is no lighting in here to light up the print as it goes along there's also no camera although the lighting and the camera is available in the pro model of the adventurer 5m but the pro model does set you back an extra 150 dollars or so the other negative that i found is that it tends to vibrate a little more than you'd want it to um, and the reason for that vibration is because of the super fast printing which is a definite plus i mean this head moves very fast um, as a result of that it does give you a significant amount of vibration so something to keep in mind when you get this and you want to make sure that you set it on a steady table or somewhere where it's not going to vibrate its way off in my case as you can see i have this sitting on a pool table and it's not going to get any sturdier than that the other thing that um, this doesn't offer is filament retraction. So uh, it does automatically extrude filament, but when it comes time to retract it, uh, you have to pull the Bowden tube up and cut the filament as low as you can, and then pull the filament out, put the new filament in, and then start another extrusion cycle so that you can uh, change the color on it so that's a somewhat of a negative but again not a big deal if it's something that you can work with positive it's very easy to set up this printer pretty much comes fully assembled the way you see it here out of the box the only thing you have to do is remove some protective covering around the print head and four screws that hold the print bed to the bottom for shipping it does offer the self-leveling at 16 points, like the more expensive uh, Cobra S1. Also a positive, especially if you're new to 3D printing, the automatic leveling will save you a lot of headaches. Definitely a plus on that. It is a little noisy when it's printing. The majority of the noise comes from a whining fan, but it's not incredibly bad. Uh, I wouldn't put it in the same room where you're gonna be sleeping because it, it can be a little disturbing. It is Wi-Fi enabled, which is great. It is also ethernet enabled, as I showed you on the back. Uh, with the app, you are able to go in here and start prints. Although you're not able to slice them using a, a mobile device, you do need a laptop with the Orca software in order to slice your prints and send them to the printer. The other plus, which I already mentioned to you guys, is the filament runout sensor. That is a definite plus because if you're printing a large file, uh, you, the last thing you want is to be more than halfway through and the filament runs out. It is incredibly fast. Guys, check this, this video is clip actual out. speed. I do not have this video on high speed. This is how fast this printer actually prints. See for yourself.
And the last positive that I have on this is basically that compared to the Cobra S1, this is incredibly affordable. Like I said, right now on Amazon, this is retailing for about $279. And as a beginner printer or as a print farm printer, it is really, really incredible. I've been running this printer for about two weeks now, just like I did with the Cobra S1 when I first got it and it hasn't failed me yet. It prints everything super fast and everything comes out in excellent quality. Haven't had one spaghetti issue yet. So, so when you start the printer up, it has this like really funny kind of sound that it makes. Uh, I think they would have been better off without that, but you'll see that here. See, I, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of that, but there probably is a way, although I haven't looked for that yet, there probably is a way to turn that sound off. Um, but I wanna show you guys the uh, screen and how responsive to touch it really is. So when the screen first comes on, it brings you to this here, as you can see the printer on there. Uh, your options here are, these are the files. This is like the options to print. Uh, this is what's already stored inside the printer's memory, and this here is what I have on the thumb drive, which obviously there's no thumb, thumb drive here, so there's no files. Okay, uh, right here is the PLA setting, so it shows you how to load the PLA, and as I mentioned earlier, in, the net, in order to retract it, you basically have to pull out the button to cut the PLA that's there, put the button to back, pull out the, the old PLA, put the new PLA in, and start another extrusion. Here are the settings, okay, you can make any settings here, like your Wi-Fi settings, your cloud settings, and you can do a test here, see, as you can see, a leveling test, a vibration test, uh, if you ever need to re-level that bed, this is how you get to it, and these are just the details on the printer itself. So. That's pretty much all you get on the uh, screen here. As you can see, it is very, very responsive to touch. And uh, it's a decent size. Like the Cobra S1, this uh, print bed has a removable plate, which makes it easier to remove your prints once they are completed. And this plate is good for PLA, PETG, ABS, and TPU. It is magnetically attached, so it has these little corners back there that help you center it. And once you've got it centered, it just sticks itself right on. If you're considering maybe getting a 3D printer uh, and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, this is definitely something to look into. If you want to spend a little more money, you can probably go with the Pro model, which has a fully enclosed uh, frame, or Cobra S1, which is also a great option. So. This pretty much wraps it up, guys. If you have any questions about this printer, please go ahead and leave your comments and questions in the description below. If there's anything I didn't cover, send me a message and I'll be sure to respond. So if you're not already subscribed, guys, go ahead and smash the subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And that way you're notified when I put up any new reviews on this printer or any printer for that matter. I also do a lot of DIYs and tool reviews, so make sure you're subscribed for those as well. Thanks for watching, I appreciate your time, and I hope this was helpful to you.